you talked about watching what was an old Saturday Night Live. Right. I was watching an old Saturday Night Live show, and I saw a sketch with John Lovitz, and I was looking at it, and I thought, it's kind of funny. And then I walked on. To your total surprise. Yes, and I had no recollection of doing it. And then, no, now it's back, and it's all completely, mm -hmm. I do remember now, but you know, you just have done, as you know, done so many things. And sometimes uh, someone will say something to me, and, I, they, and they'll say something, and it's kind of funny, and I'll go, oh, it's funny. And then I realize it was my, one of my old lines, mm -hmm. or it was not funny. I think it's more than the amount of things you've done, though. I think it might be that, that a different Ill. person performs Yes, yeah, I think that's there. true. And for the same reason you say, some, you come off and someone says, that was great, that thing you said about the beehive, and you say, I don't remember anything about a right. beehive. What was it? Your friend, Mr. Carson, once seemed relieved during a commercial break when I had first done talk shows, and I said, during break, do you ever forget who you just taped with? <laughs> he said, oh, God, does that happen to you, too? Well, uh, he now, you said, sat in that chair, is that him? Uh, uh, he said something to me between commercials one time that was so, I don't know if it'll mean anything to anybody but a performer, but he had just done a, a voice of Goofy. You know, mm -hmm. he just, uh, and he did Goofy for some reason. Yeah. And then he went to commercial, and I was a, very, a newcomer to show business, and he leaned over and he said, you'll use everything you ever knew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you, did you meditate before coming here, or have some violent physical activity? Why, am I sweating? No, what? not at all, the opposite. I'm calm. You seem to be almost zen possessed of yourself to the point where I'm I'm doing it uh, for show business. I'm trying to look calm. Oh, you're playing it's calm. Acting. Yeah, you can play calm. calm, playing happy. And actually, I for the last year, I don't know. I've just been very happy and very calm. And I think finally you accept, or one accepts, or I accept that. Uh, you know, life goes on, and it used to matter so much when movies would come out and other people saying, what is this, what is this, mm -hmm. how was I, and all this. And then you finally just accept yourself, and you think, sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm okay. Right. And uh, it goes on, life goes on, and it's not going to destroy me, or, you know. And this too shall pass. Yeah, exactly. So that's another way of saying what I just said, but... Did I over-encapsulate it? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> it, I like it, mine better, actually. It's an, it yeah. sort of rambles. Oh, but mine's from the Bible, Steve. Well, I you know. may want to. I know. You know, you have viewers out there who have family values. I thought it was Ozymandias or something. That poem. <laughs> that Ozymandias. Isn't it? You know that moment when you're falling asleep and you start to go to sleep, and then you go. Yeah. You know what that's called? You never had that? <laughs> yeah. I've had oh, that. come on! Every what is it called? Want to know? Yeah. The myoclonic jerk. Really? You know that was the original title of the jerk. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me, damn it. That's what I was going to say. Look, oh, I had well, that already. When you to say go that was the original, oh, well, hell. Uh, I, I try to think of you working at Disney Disneyland when I was a kid. Yeah, I read I that worked there from age 10 about. to age 17. It gets overstated, and I hate to talk about it again, but I, you know, what happens in show business is, is if you give an interview for Dick Cavett, or you talk to the man from the American Philosophical Journal, mm -hmm. and you're really dealing with a different audience when I talk to you or the American Phil I'm making this magazine up, I don't know that it exists, then you, you would say different things to them than you would on Entertainment Tonight. Because yeah. it's a different audience, you're talking to different people. However, what I say to you or the American Philosophical Journal gets picked up and it's in page six of the New York Post. It says, I don't believe in God, you know, mm -hmm. or something like yep. that. So you have to be careful what you say at all times. Now, I don't know why I started talking about this. Well, I talked about Disney World, the fact that you've Disney Land, right. I believe, and you talked about it. <laughs> went a lot. long way to get to this yeah. point that you know, certain things get overblown in your life, although it was an important uh, episode. It, I guess because a computer check would show that it occurs in almost everything ever printed about right. you. People probably think it was a central event of your life. Right. Well, oh, I, I, I had a good spooky. time. I was in a fantasy world you know you go to work and you're 10 and you yeah. put on the little straw hat and the derby or the derby and the garter and you're selling newspapers and so, it was really so fun there. and I learned so much there I I, uh, I I was a magician at the magic shop doing it eight ten hours a day and there's no mm -hmm. experience like that I mean I can look mm -hmm. at guys who do cards I don't really do it anymore but I can look at guys who do cards who practice a lot and I go I know I was better because I did it mm -hmm. eight, ten hours a day this far away from people 
And it's just that experience is so valuable. If everything we aren't good at in life, we did eight to 10 hours a day, think how good we'd yeah. be. Can you still do that coin shuffle with one hand? I'm not going to ask no, you. No, I, I, I can do it uh, if, 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 with a little practice. Yeah. But that actually came from playing poker. I used to play poker for hours and hours and hours and hours. And that's the time I learned how to shuffle uh, coins and chips. And co are you in that poker circle in LA that includes Carson yes, and uh, right. who else used to? Uh, it's the most, uh, you know, sort of namby pamby poker game. We go to Dan Melnick's house and we do not play for money, we play for chips. I have a blue one, I have a red one. And we sit and talk for about 15 or 20 minutes and then we go play. Uh, poker until nine, yeah. and then Dan Melnick prepares a gourmet meal, and we eat that. Then we go back about ten and play till ten thirty. <laughs> you stay up that late? Yes. Yeah. Like and everybody's going. Oh boy! Last round. Last round. That sounds like something my aunt would describe. It is just. It is so <laughs> fun. <laughs> you know? And Neil Neil Simon is you know he's just such a funny person. But oh yes, he he happens to be funny as yes. well as being able to produce right. funny. You want to know what, a, in contrast, and I would rather die than be a name dropper. Mm -hmm. Guess what an evening at Eddie Murphy's house is like. What? Not like that. Incredible. All these women. And mm -hmm. he's got the pool, all these mirrored rooms and all this stuff. Right. Very soon after dinner, all the ladies go home and all the men play Monopoly. Is this the truth? I'm, it's the, really? may God strike mm -hmm. one of us dead if yeah. it isn't. Well, I think one of he may strike one of us dead anyway. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just based on the movie I did. Uh, any problem in releasing it at Christmas? For uh, no, I, I think it's actually quite an emotional uh, film that sort of is a uplifting oh. movie. But any time you do a film that is deals with this subject, you just know that someone's going to have a knee jerk. Uh -huh. reaction to it and we'll see it in the wrong light but I, I think the facts yeah. are in the film I promise you you'll get at least one hate letter from Waco Texas most yeah. mine comes from there for some reason D did you say that knowing that I was born in Waco Texas get out of here Is I am true? I, I was born in Waco Texas That's I remember spooky. tornadoes and Dr. Pepper well do you have a relative there who starts letters you little sawed off <laughs> baggage <laughs> shrimp communist yeah. I won't say the I other word because this might be the holiday season I had no idea. That's one of those incredible mm -hmm. coincidences. And this film was shot in Texas, so it was a little bit like going yeah. home. Steve, thanks for being I wish you were here every day. Uh, thank you for being both yeah. a philosopher, a mansion, a pantaloon. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. be both three a things. Pantaloon. A pantaloon. Is that a half a pant? What is that? <laughs> I th isn't, isn't that some 18th century term for a comic, I think? Hmm. Oh, damn. Now I've taken the well, edge pantaloons off. are your pants, aren't They're they? your pants, yeah. yeah. I guess one who dropped his pants in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. That's what the loon means. To drop pant a loon. You're much too much a scholar for me. <laughs> <laughs>